Hi there, in this video we're going to look at Django Debug Toolbar and how it can be used to improve your application's performance and your database queries. So let's see the documentation right now. We've got Django Debug Toolbar's docs open. You can install the package using pip with this command and I will link this page in the description. I've already done that so let's get started by adding Debug Toolbar to installed apps. Within your installed apps I'm just going to add this below Django HTMX which we used in the previous tutorial. So if we save that, we also need to add a middleware to the settings.py and I'm just going to put that below or rather above the HTMX middleware, just put it there. So debug toolbar's middleware is important, you need that in the, the middleware section. We also need to change our urls.py file, so I'm going to copy and paste some code into here. In urls.py we are going to import debug toolbar and we're going to include the debug toolbar URLs that come with the package. So in the URL patterns, just add that line there. And the final thing I think we need to do is add to our internal IPs to the settings.py. This is a setting that will tell debug toolbar which IPs can access the toolbar. For now, we're just going to make that localhost and we'll save and see if that comes up in the front end of the application now. So if we refresh the page, you see on the side here, we've got Django debug toolbar. And you can hide this and show it as you want. Um, and the important information for this tutorial is going to be in the SQL tab, which tells you what database queries that you are issuing. And if we look at the films page, this contains all of the films in the users list. And the way that this is done um, is it loads up the user film instances. And then in the template, as you can see uh, here in the film list elements template, we have a for loop iterating over all of the films and accessing the foreign key film. Dot name. So if we look back at the models file, what we can see is we have a user films instance, we have a for loop of those, and we follow the foreign key to the film model. Now this is actually issuing a new query for every single um, model in our for loop. So we fetch all the user films and then for each one of them we fetch the foreign key to the film element in this particular statement here. This is called the n plus 1 problem, we're going to see how to remedy this in Django now. So if we look at the debug toolbar, we see that we're issuing 104 queries on this page. And the useful part here, it says 100 of these queries are, are similar, where we're actually filtering by an ID. Um, so the first thing we do, if you look at this, this here, we select all of the user films for the logged in user who has ID 1. Then in the template for each of those 100 movies, we're issuing another SQL query to get the related film by its ID. So there's a very simple way to solve this in Django to make only one or two queries. Basically what we need to do is go to our film list. This is a view and it has a get query set method. This is what gets the initial user film objects. But we can tell Django, can you also join together with the related film objects? And we use a function called prefetch related for that. And we specify the relation that we're going to prefetch, which is film. Let me spell that right. And now if we reload the toolbar, we should see that the 104 queries are actually cut down to 5. Now that's quite a significant saving on your database I.O. And that's going to probably save your web server uh, or your database server an awful lot of time and effort. So these kind of things, these optimizations, as you build an application, um, they can be quite important if you're doing things such as the N plus 1 problem. Now I've not been focusing too much on database um, optimization, so Things like this can happen and you eventually will need to go and sometimes solve these issues. Debug toolbar is very useful for doing that. Now one other issue I've got is in the sort functionality. Now I've got a lot of films here. If I try and sort them, it's going to iterate all over all of them. And it's taken quite a while here before these films are actually sorted. As you can see, it's still doing it actually. And I think debug toolbar is, is slowing this down as well. So we're going to see how to fix that here and this is still <laughs> in motion this query so yep finally it completes and that's unacceptable performance that takes about 15 seconds there i think it was a lot faster without debug toolbar so um, always keep that in mind that the other things might be slowing it down but we're going to see how it fixed the sort endpoint now to make this a lot better now if we look at the sort endpoint um it's down here it's a, fu it's a function based view called sort I've added some code here uh, for pagination to work. And remember in the last video we added pagination. We also need to do some work to make that pagination work in our sort so that it knows what page it's on. And we do that with some simple arithmetic here. 
Now, you don't need to worry about that, but what we do need to worry about is the fact that we're doing um, a get request to the database, a, a userfilm.objects.get request, for as many iterations as we have uh, film primary keys. So if we have 150 elements in our list, it's going to do 150 get requests to the database, or 150 queries to the database to get the user films. That's not optimal, so we're going to figure out how to solve that now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and prefetch all of the user films. Now we know the user films um, comes from this statement, we can get them by filtering down by the request.user, so that will give us all the user films associated with the user. Now what we need to do is that will fetch all of them in one query, so we can then change this statement here to use the user films list to look up the primary key. So I'm going to write this line of code and then we'll explain it in a minute. So we're going to set user film equal to, and we're going to use the built in next function here. I'm going to say u for u in user films if u dot primary key is equal to the film primary key. So this is just a different way to express this without actually hitting the database. We hit the database once to get all of the user films and then we have this next statement which will look through that list and when it finds a primary key equal to the one that we're iterating over it will return that into a variable called user film. Once we find that, we can then set its order and save it and append it to the list that we had before. Now, will that help? Let's see now. Let's save that and go to the front end. Um, so, one thing that I didn't show you is that when we do the AJAX requests, you don't automatically see an update on debug toolbar, but you need to go to the history tab. And data from this panel isn't available anymore, so let me just go back to the films page. And we're going to issue another long running query. So we'll be back in a second when this is sorted. So that's finally sorted. This is with the original code. You can see if we switch to, we go to the history tab and we switch here to the post request that was issued with HTMX. We're issuing 302 queries in order to sort this simple list when we switch one element's order. Now that's probably not the best way to do this. So we're going to figure out what's going wrong here. Now the first thing we've, we've done is um, we, we changed the code to use that next statement. So I'm going to comment this back in and we'll see if we can reduce 302 queries. One thing I missed out in the last part was this, you need to convert the film primary key that we're iterating over to an integer so that this equality will match. So if we reissue the AJAX statement now, we have 302 queries initially. This simple change of prefetching the objects here and then searching through the list rather than fetching them every time from the database should reduce 302 down a little bit. So if we go to the history tab and refresh, switch to that and it's now down to 203 queries. So that's an improvement. It's not hitting the database quite as much, but we still have a hundred similar queries here when we are updating. So when we update the order field, we are issuing a hundred queries to do that. Let's figure out how we can improve that. And this can be done very easily. What we've got at the moment is a films list. I'm going to create another uh, variable called updated films. This is going to have the instances that we are actually updating in this list. So what we do is we, we're going to check now if the user film dot order, if it's already equal to the index, then we know it hasn't changed. So if it's not equal to the index, we are going to reset the order to uh, whatever the index is. And then we're going to add it to our updated films by appending it to that there. So updated films dot append user film. So let's just walk through what that's doing. Uh, basically in the for loop we are going to check each user film that we're iterating over to see if its order matches the index. If it does match then uh, we will not go into this if block and it's not changed so we're not going to add it to the updated list but if it has changed we'll add it to the updated list. And then at the end of this I'm going to get rid of this user film dot save statement. This is what actually performs the update. And then the updated films, I'm going to um, use this updated films to bulk update the database. And how do we do this? We're going to call userfilms.objects.bulk update. This is a function on the Django ORM. And we pass the list, which is updated films, and we pass a, another list of fields here, which is going to tell you what fields do we want to update. We only want to update the order field. So let's see now if we save this and run it, we've got rid of that save statement that's going on every time we iterate and we've replaced it with one bulk update statement. And it's only going to update the films that have an order that's changed from the index of iteration. 
So let's see in the front end what we can do with this. If we refresh the page and if we change the order here slightly and this is still going to take a little while but hopefully we'll return soon. And we can check the history tab when that finishes and refresh that and we get the sort request at the, at the bottom here, that's the most recent one. If we switch to that we see we've cut 203 queries down to 105. So another big improvement here, the update statement is now one single statement, it's a bulk update that will update everything in the list that has changed. So that's a big improvement and we're not issuing as many queries to change data. Finally we have this select statement and this I believe is the n plus one problem again and it has a very easy fix as we've seen earlier. To the initial fetch of all of the user's films we'll, we'll add a prefetch related here and we'll prefetch all of the film foreign key instances that are related to these uh, many to many elements. And by doing that hopefully we will see this page is much more performant um, and you see it updates almost instantly. If we refresh this here we should see the sort request and it's issuing only six queries to the database so we've managed to cut this down from I think it was like 305 queries down to six just by being aware of the n plus one problem and being careful about how we call a model save method. We don't want to call it within a for loop. Instead, we can use functions such as bulk update and bulk create in order to change lots of things at once. And this cuts down big time on your database IO. And usually if you're experiencing problems in performance, doing this kind of thing with Django debug toolbar can really help improve your application. So that covers this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe if you have and thank you for watching.